In this episode, we'll take an initial look at the Aperture F10 Fresnel and also the two bay battery power station. Aperture just released a couple of new accessories for a variety of their lights. And in fact, we're going to take a look at the F10 Fresnel, which is really a larger 10 inch Fresnel designed for the 600D. Can also be used on some of the smaller heads as well. So anything with a Bowens mount. So we just did a couple quick shots here. Now, first of all, I don't have the F10 barn doors. Those I have pre-ordered and I'm hoping to get those here pretty soon. I'm excited about those. I think the combination of the F10 Fresnel and the F10 barn doors will be really, really nice to work with. To me, I found over time that while it really makes sense to start with soft lighting sources if you're going to be shooting like interviews and talking head and stuff like that, but as soon as you start getting to product shots and also if you're doing, if you want to do something that's a little bit more stylized and interesting and creative, that's where I think introducing some additional hard light makes a lot of sense. And that's where a Fresnel, of course, fits in. So we did a few things here. First of all, we did a shot here where we just use the F10 from behind Emma. And this is the kind of shot you can get here. It looks uh, <laughs> a little bit on the gritty side, but uh, definitely kind of a fun look here. Now, all we did literally here was place the 600D with the Fresnel F10 behind her. The dimmer was set at 0 0.1. <laughs> so basically it's absolute lowest setting. And this is what we got here. So again, lots of fun things you can do with this. We, of course, I'd probably spice this up a little bit more, maybe add something on the backdrop, um, maybe with the spotlight mount, gelled blue or a different color, and uh, kind of get some color contrast going as well. So here we're using the Aperture P300C, the Nova, with its softbox on. And then I've also put the 600D, again, with the Fresnel F10 on it, about 15 feet away. So we're using the two of them. And this is an interesting look from the standpoint that you get a little bit of soft light and a little bit of hard light. So you get the kind of the character of both of them, which adds a little bit more drama than if you were just to use a soft light. So again, just very subtle changes that we're doing here, but something that adds a little bit of spice. And then of course here, we have a, just a hard light from above and uh, coming down so you can again do some more kind of stylized things here as well. So let me just kind of make some observations in working with this so far that I've seen. First of all, there is, I think a big question that people have is, is, is there spill light? And with the very first Fresnel lens that Aperture did, it was spilling all over the place. <laughs> the Fresnel 2X, their second generation Bowens mount uh, Fresnel lens, again, smaller than the F10 here, it did a good job. They, they really kind of moved forward. They were able to clean up a lot of the spill light, at least on the sides. Um, and actually, I'm not really seeing any spill from anywhere. On the F10, we are seeing a little bit of spill out the back, but it doesn't seem to be in the direction that you're throwing light. So I don't really see this as an issue, but you know, just because of all the heat that's being generated with these bigger lights, huge Fresnel, um, a two glass, lens design there's a lot of heat that's generated so they did have to have a way for it to you know kind of thermal management and so there are these open slats but they did some interesting things in terms of the configuration here and let's just show you let me pull it over to the back here so you can see here this is the bones mount and then you also have this kind of spoke design that's kind of offset um, so it allows air to flow through freely but at the same time um, you know it prevents more spill from happening. So overall, I didn't think that's gonna really be a problem in most cases where I'm working. And here's a shot where I just kind of stand behind it and show you how much light is spilling to the back, just so you can see. In terms of build, this thing is really solid. Um, it is, the body here is made of some sort of techno composite material and super well put together. Here's the Bowens mount, of course. Um, we've got some, solid construction with all the screws here. I've noticed with the the hooks here that hold the barn doors in place, they're each attached with three different screws. And um, this thing is heavy. I mean, it's pretty substantial 
of course, that uh, glass lens here. And then there's also a second glass lens back here, which you can just see. And it kind of optimizes itself for the 600D. Again, as I said, you can use it on the 300D and the 300X and even the 120s. Um, we'll do some additional testing with that and see how that pans out. But so far, I've just used it with the 600D. Now, in terms of what you can do with this, so it can spot to flood. Um, so it spots down to 15 degrees, floods at 45 degrees. And what I found is when we put it at a 45 degree beam angle, we were getting 9,660 lux. We measured with the Seiconic C800. If I put that at a 15 degree beam angle in the center, we're getting 27,300 lux at three meters. So both of those measurements were taken at three meters. Normally I do the measurements at one meter. Um, this thing is searing at one meter. So, <laughs> and you're not gonna generally be using it that close. So I backed off to three meters, which is what you kind of see on a lot of the industry measurements, it seems like for the bigger lights. So that's what I'm getting there. Now, if you are zoomed in at 15 degrees, we wanted to take a look at how much fall off you see from the center of the light to the edges. And what we saw there is that we were at about F22 at the middle. And then as you move out to the very edge, we fell out to about seven, F7. So again, this is at 23.976, 180 degrees, ISO 400, and the light at 100%. This is a 600D. When we moved out to 45 degrees, what we found is at the very middle, we were at F2.7. And then when you move out to the edges, you fell off to F5.6. So kind of a much smoother. Um, and I almost really kind of see that as a floodlight. It is a pretty even fall off. So pretty, pretty useful from that standpoint. It does also come with this very well padded semi hard case. And at the time of the review, the F10 Fresnel is priced at $219 US, which is an, seems an incredible price for a 10 inch Fresnel. And then the F10 Barn Doors, again, which I pre-ordered and hoping to get those really soon, come in at $139 US. Those will be really nice because I do like to cut light and do some interesting things with it that way. Um, for narrative work, it's fun if you can, you know, you've seen the Indiana Jones where he steps into the light in the, you know, down in the dungeons and, it, you know, the light just comes across his eyes like that. So it's, you can do fun, cool stuff like that. And then of course, when you start doing product shots, that's where I think hard light really adds a lot of drama and a lot of interest in terms of doing very quick light fall off and things like that. So get some really cool things there. Next up, let's go ahead and switch over to the two bay battery power station. So this is going to be for cinema batteries. And what you can do here is you can power the Nova P300C or the new Amaran lights as well, the 100 and the 200 series. You've got two battery plates. In this case, I have the V-mount version. There is also a gold mount version. And what the unit looks like, here's the front of the unit. Um, we have pretty much solid aluminum build, except for the battery plates, which are plastic, like most cinema battery plates. Um, really solid switch there. A three pin XLR output to feed the power. And it does deliver 48 volt, 10 amps. So again, it's very much specifically made for the Nova P300C and the new Amaran lights, which all run at that, it can deliver up to 10 amps, so that's gonna be able to power the P300C, the Nova. And in fact, when I put two 95 watt hour uh, DNO batteries on this, I was able to power the Nova for 28 minutes at full power. Now, that might not sound like very much, but with, but with two 95 watt hour batteries, that's actually pretty amazing. And then if you were to power the 100D, the Amron light, you would get closer to almost three hours, probably about two hours and 45 minutes. So with those same batteries. So you can definitely do some nice things with this if you're not near AC power. A Couple of things about this. Let me just kind of run through the thing. So again, very nice aluminum build here. We do have this Velcro strap on top. Um, it has these kind of feet here, which make it so that it's very stable when you set it on a surface like that. Um, let's see, there is a fan. Um, and the fan does make some noise. So here's my perspective in this particular case. Now, if I'm gonna be using this, I'm not near AC power. So I'm probably gonna be outdoors or at a somewhat remote location. And so in those cases, I'm probably gonna be working and, and you know, I've got a long enough cable here. This, this is the cable it comes with. And it also comes with this uh, three pin to four pin XLR adapter. Um, I can set this a little bit away from the light um, and the fan, while it does make some noise, it seems a bit a, a little bit lower pitched than a lot of the other fans I've seen on some other lights. 
And so I don't find it to be super offensive. It's something that can be cleaned up pretty pretty easily in post if it does get into your sound. But again, I think it's not going to be a major problem because of where you'll situate the light. And you can place this away from the light if you need to as well. So some fan noise, but uh, I don't really see it as a problem on this unit. Some other things about this. It does come with a quick release attached to the unit permanently. And this is so that you can attach it to a C-stand, for example, with the Aperture Lightning clamp. Um, that's a $65 or $68 add-on, I think. We'll put a link for that down below as well. But that keeps it on the stand is nice and firm and a very secure attachment there as well. Now, the fan is not always on. It only comes on when the unit gets warm. And there's no sort of setting to, you know, tell it to always be on or always not be on. <laughs> it just does it itself. It actually has some sort of thermal detector in there and turns on when it gets to a certain temperature. This comes with a one-year warranty and we'll go ahead and put a link for that down below as well. Now we'll need to do a more in-depth review at some point in the future. I think what I'd like to do at some point is we, I've reviewed so many lights and I haven't gone back and done sort of a meta review of the lights that I would choose and which ones are most useful for the work I'm doing and in what situations. So we'll probably come back and do that and include these in that analysis as well. So I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and put those down below. And if you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon. Bye.